Choosing the right SD card for your camera may seem like a quick pick, but not all cards are created equal. It's important to choose the right card to avoid running out of space or experiencing errors while shooting. Today I'm going to break down the markings you'll find on the front of SD cards and what you should really be paying attention to when shooting photos and video. I'll be using this Lexar Professional card to walk through the markings. This is my card of choice, but all the markings are industry standard by the SD Association, so they'll be the same on different brands. The first marking and the one that will stand out the most is storage capacity. Having more storage is never a bad idea, and I would recommend getting the most that you can afford. When shooting raw photos or 4K video, files can get big, and you don't want to run the risk of running out of storage. I've found that 128 gigabytes has been fine if I'm dumping my card at the end of my day of diving. Next is the SD type. The original SD card came out in 1999 and can only hold up to two gigabytes of data. As files got larger, new types came out to expand storage capacities. This card is SDXC, which stands for Secure Digital Extended Capacity, which can hold between 32 gigabytes and two terabytes. For standard diving and almost any shooting style, this should be enough storage. The next marking is the read speed, which is measured in megabytes per second. So when you're transferring photos and videos from your card to your computer, this number will determine how fast the transfer will be. Next to that will be the card's write speed. Unfortunately, sometimes the write speed isn't advertised and it's often slower than the read speed. It's also measured in megabytes per second and indicates how fast photos and videos can be recorded onto the card. This is important if you're shooting burst photos. A fast write speed will clear the camera's internal buffer quicker and allow you to shoot again if you've filled up the buffer. Now, marked read and write speeds are the maximum the card can perform at, but oftentimes you'll experience slower rates in actual use due to several different factors, so you'll want to pay attention to the speed class. This number will show you the minimum consistent write speed of the card. There have been different classes throughout the years, but you can just focus on the latest class, the video speed class. Right now, V30 is a good baseline minimum for shooting burst photos and 1080 HD video. Choose V60 or better if you're shooting 4K video, and you'll need a V90 card if you're recording 8K video. Next is bus speed. It's not really important what it is, but it does aid in faster read and write speeds. If you flip over the card, you'll either see one or two contacts. One is UHS-1 and two is UHS-2. Make sure that your camera is compatible with UHS-2 cards. If it's not and you use a UHS-2 card, you won't see the speed benefits of the second row of contacts. One last thing I want to mention is data rot. Hundreds of cycles of writing and formatting your card will cause types of internal damage to the card. And while it's not as big of a deal as it used to be, it's still something to think about. Prograde cards offer a technology to monitor your card's health and factory reset the card for a longer life. But if you're working with other brands like I am and are constantly shooting every day, or you're a full-time photographer, I'd recommend replacing your cards maybe once a year. It just depends on how often you're shooting. And for any professional paid work, I would always shoot to two cards if your camera allows for it. And dump your card to a hard drive after each day of diving. The last thing you want is to come home with a corrupted card and no photos. I hope this breakdown of ST cards was helpful. And if you have any questions, drop a comment below or reach out to us at ikelite at ikelite.com.